Today at the Breakfast Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, condemns the 2023 budget of the National Assembly in strong terms, Trefim's lawsuit. Will this reduce the growing budget deficit? Also on the breakfast, despite growing concerns, Nigerians' education allocation still below recommended benchmark. How do we make the sector a priority? And like always, we will be reviewing all the top stories making headlines across national dailies. Welcome to The Breakfast. I am Justin Akadoni. And I am Messi Boko. It's a beautiful uh, Monday morning and it feels really great to be back on your screen. Yes, uh, glad to be here. That's it. Once again, Messi, it's been like a minute. How are you doing? How was your weekend? Uh, very great. Mm. You're just glowing, though. Is that something you're not telling us? <laughs> so I think that we had this conversation off air, but it's fine that we're having it on air now. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's because I've, I've actually been resting. You've been resting? Mm -hmm. And very you've been important. frolicking and having a great I'm time? I'm not even sure. <laughs> I have no idea what that means, but, you know, I've been resting. It's very essential. You know how we say, uh, there's this, you know, phrase, mm. that health is well. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say, oh, okay, no play. No, 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 no. You know, Makes mercy a dog girl. You know, so it's important that you take out time, you know, to pay attention to your health and get some rest. It's very important. And that's what <laughs> Messi, I this was more than just rest <laughs> because from pictures I saw, I, I, was, say, I was seeing Gilly and the likes. <laughs> Messi, it's not talking of. I told you have some explaining to do, right? No, so I, I think that you're exaggerating at this point in time. And, uh, uh, you I'm know exaggerating. How just, yes, you are exaggerating. And you know how we can... Also, you know how... Uh, you cannot understand what he's saying because I think he's exaggerating, right? Uh, you don't have all of the facts. So... Uh, who believes you that there was a gilly? It's only you that saw the gilly. I don't know where you saw the gilly. <laughs> Ice cream grabbed the, <laughs> your status. So I can oh change my. to the people. Oh, well. I'm not sure that was the case. But <laughs> to be very honest, you know, I needed some time out to rest. And it All was right. good that... Well, it's good you had um, the rest. And it actually that. is um, showing them a lot in you. And uh, you're well rested and back at work. Yes. Yes. Okay, Messi is not what's trending. <laughs> it's not big, what we, we, uh, a whole lot of them happened uh, you know, in the social media space. Uh, uh, Papa Jasko, I don't know if you followed that particular. Uh, I like how you comedy. say it, Papa Jasko. <laughs> yes, that's what it's called, right? Papa Jasko. Unless you All watched right. it, right? Of course, I saw Papa Jasko. Oh, is, is it um, the, the, the one on the print or the TV series? No, no. Do you want me to do one of the last? <laughs> <laughs> okay, just joking. Mm. Okay, so Papa Jasko, uh, the standing one, not the main one, uh, you know, has passed on. It, it was a. Uh, um, a misquill, uh, several tales on social media because uh, Nigerians were, you know, actually saying that the main Papa Jasko actually passed on. So, veteran actor and former music instructor with the National Troop of Nigeria, Femi Ogorombi, is dead. He was a standing actor for the Wale Adenuga comic series, Papa Jasko. He was said to have died on Saturday evening. Now, the sad news was disclosed in a post by writer and theater practitioner, Shaibu Husseini. Now, the TV comic series, Papa Jasko and Company, formerly the Jasko family, is a Nigerian family television sitcom created by Wale Adenuga in 1996. The show is a spin-off of a feature film of the same title produced by Adenuga in 1984, which in turn is based on the comic Ikebe Suba. Now, the story revolves around the Ajasko family and their comedic interpretations of major societal issues. The main characters include womanizing patriarch Papa Ajasko, his long-suffering wife, Mama Jasko, their mischievous son, <laughs> Baba Jasko, local playboy, boy Aliko, this girl's go bigger, Miss McMahon. Now, the late Femi Ogurambi took over the character of Baba Jasko when the former character, Richard Abiodun Ayoinka, pulled out of the show and he carried the light very well while it lasted, or carried the weight very well while it lasted. Mercy. Well, so uh, as much as uh, it's very saddening mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, Papa Jasko the second has passed on uh, because yesterday, prior to yesterday, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of conversation uh, from s Saturday evening yeah. up until, uh, you know, yesterday and up until this moment as sure. to, 
you know, which of the Papa Jaskos we're talking about. But I think that he played a role. Uh, so he, he, he did very well with carrying out, you know, that particular character. He played the role very well. Uh, we're talking about um, Femi now. Femi did very well with the character. Mm -hmm. And that's why I feel that Nigerians were finding it very difficult to differentiate between... Uh, one you know, from the other. Yes, one from the other. That's uh, Yinka. Yinka yes. and uh, Femi at this point in time. Although yesterday, uh, due to all of the discrepancies, there was a video from uh, you know Yinka saying, mm -hmm. "Hey, I'm healed and happy. I'm here. I'm not dead. I'm alive." And he did that. Could you? Could you? <laughs> you know, it could be you know, you know, so <laughs> I mean, that you're dead. <laughs> you're alive. It, it, it's, it's a lot, but it, yes. it's unfortunate because I know that it's very saddening mm -hmm. uh, for someone to lose their life. The family would be thrown into mourning, and it. Sometime, you should also remember, he's lost his wife mm -hmm. you know, about last year or thereabouts. Yeah, two years ago. So. Yes, and be, yeah. uh, now he's gone. But it's a good thing that mm. he took on that character and he when did the well. major character left, yes. and he did very well. He did well. And yes. that's why I think that we're grappling with who is who, who is mm -hmm. the real Papa mm -hmm. Jasko. We can't differentiate. Uh, if you look at this, he's bow, uh, he's bald headed. Yes, and yes. Uh, because he's wearing a cap now, if he takes mm -hmm. a cap, so yes, I think that you know it was also okay for the producers to look for someone who Who's can actually like leave you know the mm -hmm. role and all of that. So, yeah. yes, very unfortunate, but you know, mm -hmm. it's a natural uh, incident that everyone must you know experience. Everyone would definitely go through that way, yes, but he, ma he made it fun for us. Uh, for those who lived during that time, mm -hmm. even when Papa Jasko left, the mm -hmm. original... Okay, so Papa Jasko <laughs> won. Papa was Jasko no <laughs> Yes, uh, he, he did very well. And he gave a lot of people uh, a great time. It was quite entertaining yes, for the while that it lasted. So we all, we all pray and that ask that he so rest in peace, our condolences you know, to the family. And uh, we continue to pray that God will comfort them. Yes, yes, we wish them the best at this particular time because it's not really easy, you know, to lose um, a loved one. It's a very sad incident. Now, I was going to just interject, uh, you know, uh, the name Papa Jasko, you know, Ayo Inka. It's, 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 it's really crazy when uh, you start reading comments, people start posting pictures of you saying that you are dead. So he had to come all out to do a post on social media, you know, debunking that he was not the actual uh, Papa Jasko that um, passed on. But then I think it's been cleared because a lot of people were saying that uh, it was fake news that Papa Jasko is not dead, but uh, the one that actually died is the stand in Papa Jasko. Yes. Well, I, I'm, sh I, I'm glad that, uh, you know, that clarification came in handy. Yes, mm -hmm. because... I knew that, uh, you, you know, I saw a lot of uh, media outlets, whether print or, you know, the blogs and what have you, there were a lot of mix up with the picture. Funny so enough, yes, you put it yeah. from the and put the wrong picture. How yeah. is that done? So a lot of persons put out the picture of Yinka. Yinka, yes. with Femi's name. With Femi's name. So that's where, uh, you know, all yeah. of that. But there were some prints that lived up to expectation. The likes mm -hmm. of Punch had it right. Mm. Uh, I don't remember the other one. I think it was Nigerian Tribune that had it right as well. But I'm, I'm glad that uh, that correction is, you know, right in front of us. And if you don't already know, uh, Papa Jasko II is, is, is the one. So that basically, we're all we're trying to say for for good journalism, just uh, do the right thing. Don't try to confuse people the more with your stories. Uh, if you say someone is dead, get the right picture and don't. It could be very embarrassing and really very sad for other people. You know, when they are not dead and their pictures are just slammed all over, you know, the media space. Well, we'll just have to move on. Actually. And I remember what you said this morning when you said standing. <laughs> Okay, because uh, I said I was uh, <laughs> Okay, so, so, uh, so, so, uh, Justin actually, he literally told me, you know, I'm standing, I'm standing. I was standing this morning, for this But I'm not dead, I'm not dying. Too. I'm, not, I'm not dead, I'm no, not dead. No, but it's okay, you're not dying. No, you not. know, I'm not dying. Uh, definitely not in the next 30, 40, 50, yes. <laughs> Moving away from that. <laughs> Uh, second on our top trending this okay. morning is uh, if you follow the news, I mean, if you follow the social media space and all that's been going on, a very popular Nigerian singer, he goes by the name Olawale Ashimene, if I got that correctly. He's uh, very known by his stage name, you want to say his music uh, name, Brimo, has tendered an apology to citizens and Nigerians from the southeastern region over his anti Igbo remarks. Mm -hmm. Now the music star had stirred, you know, several controversy when he went on, on Twitter rant against Igbos over their political affiliation and differences. Trust me, I don't even want to go <laughs> verbatim with some of the things that, that Brian said. I was really heartbroken. I mean mm. <laughs> I was heartbroken because 
I'm, I'm, I remember when I used to be on the radio, Brimo used to make my playlist. You just love his songs. Yeah, Wonderful and you know, songs. you would wake up in the morning and want to play Brimo's song on Very the radio. And one would think that, you know, Brimo would understand the dynamics because he sang about, you know, reality. He wasn't just the con contemporary singer or he's not just, mm -hmm. you know, the regular singer who sings about everything. But True. he was, you know, you want to talk about conscious songs, Brimo, you give it to Brimo because he, that's what he does. Mm -hmm. And so one would expect that, you know, a person of that caliber should understand whether or not, but even though he extended an apology, his comment, he said that, um, mm. I, 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 we get to that point where we talk about his apology, but what actually led to the apology was that a petition was launched on a platform called change.org for his Afrima nomination to be revoked with immediate effect. And we had over 600,000, oh, wow, uh, you know, nomination much. and votes. Yes. And so, uh, I, I think that he felt the heat, Bramo felt the heat and backlash from Nigerians and decided to apologize during an Instagram live session. But let's even look at the apology. Brimo explained that the fracas started after he argued over the decision of award-winning actor Chimamanda Adichie Ngozi, you remember, mm -hmm. uh, where she was, uh, you know, accepting given a, a traditional title. And she said, oh, accepting the traditional title, Chieftain C title, and ignoring the national honors. Don't forget that, you know, when we had the national honors, Chimamanda, Chimamanda Adichie mm -hmm. was also a nominee, but she, she wasn't present. She didn't, she didn't show up. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there was a representative. Yeah. Uh, it's However, decision. according to him, he said that that shouldn't have been the case, considering mm. how the region is clamoring for presidency. So Brahmo said that the statement was taken out of context because he only used it to refer to those who were championing the movement for his downfall and not the entire tribe itself. Well, he said, I did not insult the Igbo tribe. That's what he said. I would not do that. I apologize to anyone who is, uh, you know, saddened by such a tweet. I was trying to weigh in on very important matters. I really don't know if that's the case. I mean, I can't begin to say the words <laughs> that w were tweeted. Those tweets are still there, <laughs> except he has deleted it on Brimo's, you know, handle. He used the swear words. He used words that I can't even use, you on know, TV. on TV right now, not even on radio. So I I'm just wondering if this apology is really earnest. But um, I, I really don't know what you make of this. I'll definitely okay. come back to my thoughts. I, I, mostly, the thing is that uh, it is really alarming when we say things and try to retract them or say that uh, we were misinterpreted. You know, we should not just go out and say things just because. So, although when he made that statement, a lot of people were saying that he was trying to trend or chase clout or something. You know, even whatever it is, you should know that uh, Nigeria here, we are very sensitive uh, people when it comes to tribal issues, you know, we've been having issues of uh, disunity in the country for a, a long time. So I believe as um, public figures, as um, artists, as singers, um, entertainers, you should be aware that uh, you uh, have a very strong position in the, in the society. And a whole lot of people <clears throat> look up to you. So whatever you say can influence, uh, you know, people's decision. And um, well, fine, it is really surprising that uh, he is actually come out to make this apology. I'm thinking it's because of, um, like you said, all the backlash that followed, uh, you know, with the awards and every other thing. But then, if Chimamanda Adichie decided to honor uh, a national award or not, it is her personal, right? It is her decision. So when you come out to say, you know, unprintable things about um, a particular section of the country, it is really, really sad because uh, I used to hold um, Brimo, you know, in high regards. I, I used to, like you said, love his songs. It was really very calm. Songs that you could just listen and you just forget about um, issues. They were very meaningful, they were impactful. So I would never have associated such comments with um, Brian Moore. But it's really, really a sad one. Honestly. Yes, very unfortunate. And just to add as we, you know, add as we coast away from this mm -hmm. uh, particular subject and move to a, another, yeah. is that if you live in Nigeria, if you were Nigerian, you would then know that, you know, this unity, you know, we're not united. It's a major yeah. issue. And, you know, this lack of unity has cost us a lot. And it's the reason why we're here today. And let's imagine that we pay attention to this because we need to be sensitive. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, experts will tell you that we have never been divided as we are today in 2023. We have been further divided. Major problem is that we haven't seen ourselves as one. And I say that even in our, you know, structures, there are structures that have enabled all of this kind of practice where you pick up a form, the first thing you begin to see is where you're from, state of origin, <laughs> you know, nationality and all of that. These are some of the issues that have constantly, you know, 
uh, fanned the wings of this unity for us. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that I leave in a country, I hope that I leave to see a Nigeria where it, it doesn't matter where you're from, whether you're Igbo, whether you're Yoruba or you're Hausa, whether you're from any part of the country, it's not important, it's not significant. It's not even an issue why you should be nominated or elected for any office or whatsoever. It's not even a merit. criteria for you there's to there's get a, a job. Yes. It, but it should be based on universal issues. For instance, do you merit the job? Uh, do you have what it takes? That's the kind of Nigeria, and I think that you know, people as artists and what have you should be sensitive enough to understand that we need to be very careful at this point. But I wouldn't really blame uh, Brimo and the likes because those who are calling the shots, the political gladiators, mm -hmm. are not doing different from what he's said. <laughs> uh, you know, the comments and the remarks and the rhetorics that True. you want to see. That's quite not, it's not really different from what, uh, you know, you have him or others uh, putting out. So it's really unfortunate. Until we get to the point where we understand that, hey, we're one Nigeria. And it doesn't really matter where you're from. You as know, long as you're Nigerian. The most important thing that should concern me is that Justin, you're a Nigerian, you're Nigerian and I'm a Nigerian. Yeah, and that's what and it should sister. be. And see, Justin, you also know that that has also affected economic policies and what have you. True. For instance, you look at some regions that are not developed via policies mm -hmm. and the politics that have been played. Mm -hmm. You have resources. Let's even talk about, you know, uh, deep sea ports. Let's even talk about several issues. You have a region, for instance, uh, we're talking about the lucky deep, deep sea port in Lagos. Lagos you yeah. also want to talk about a deep sea port that is not functional. And so for Cross River State or Calabar, you hear that, oh, there's, there's need for us to dredge. Mm. So what's stopping the seaport from functioning? These are the issues. Until we get to a point where we understand that, hey, we're one, we're one nation. Well, first we do think. That, that's, then, that's when we, we, we think that we can solve, we have actually moved the way and solved one mm -hmm. side of the problem, but we need to move away quickly because uh, time is not on our side. No, it is not. Uh, we moved, uh, we'll move on now to the last uh, top trending for the day. It is about uh, retired officers, uh, police officers to be precise. You know, it is really sad when I hear stories like this, but let me just uh, get to the crux of the matter. Now, the retired officers of the Nigerian Police Force have threatened to embark on a nationwide protest if the National Pension Commission, PENCOM, fails to address issues surrounding the pension funds contributed by the retired officers. In a warning statement by the Kirby State Chapter of the Aggrieved Retired Police Officers, they called on the Inspector General of Police and the Minister of Police Affairs to direct the DG of PENCOM to refund their money immediately before it becomes too late. Now, the retired police officers therefore called on all its state chapters to get ready for the nationwide protest slated for the end of January. Uh, let me just uh, quote them verbatim. They said, our stand is this, the federal government should immediately direct the DG Pencom to refund all the money contributed by the retirees of the police back to them. This is pure fraud and cheating, also daylight robbery that you suffer both day and night and endanger your life with criminals political crisis, and after God protect your life for 35 years in service, somebody from nowhere, uh, so-called Penka, will now control your benefit. It is only in Nigeria that such a uh, thing happened to police retirees. Now, this chapter suggests to the national headquarters of Repons to immediately send a warning notice to the Penka and federal government for the proposed pending protest by the end of January. They went on to say many other things. Mercy. It is really, really sad when you hear things like this. After dedicating your life in the police, in security, uh, or security generally, it is a very a high risk job. And after devoting you know, so much, you've even contributed. You know, because pension contribution is uh, exactly uh, your contribution plus uh, your office. So you also contributed with the hope that uh, when I retire, I should have some money to go back. But when you retire and eventually someone is telling you you, don't, you can't have your money, it's crazy, Messi. And, 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 and that's not because we're the only ones that exist on planet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have others who exist. These things are not rocket science, right? No, it's, it, it's really unfortunate that this is happening. And you have to have people who have committed their lives, you know, 35 years, uh, having to trunk to the street, to take to the streets mm -hmm. uh, to protest because they actually survive the course of service. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of persons who go through the entire service and don't make it out, but this is what it is. Is it not shameful that we have constantly, you know, lived in a society where we have uh, weak institutions and then we have strong men who are calling the shots? And that's not very encouraging. 
And these are the issues that contribute to insecurity. So if we begin to look at the insecurity that we're faced with, we talk about crimes and criminality and the fact that it's actually on the rise, then how do we explain it? So mm. uh, don't forget that these men have served in, in the system. If they feel very disgruntled, then it's also possible, it's also possible that um, uh, they, would have, uh, they would have their grievances and then they would take se several actions. Well, what if, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. I'm just saying what if uh, these persons who are disgruntled decide to say, hey, we're going to also contribute to sabotaging the economy. And then, you know, taking to crime and criminality. As much as that's not an excuse, but I'm saying, what if? How, how do we even, you know, sleep and live like this? It's, uh, it's, wonder, it's not even, wonder, you know, um, a very honorable thing to, to say this morning. It's despicable that we're talking about it. it. Is. But we're mm -hmm. calling on the, you know, the relevant author authorities at this point in time. Uh, we're calling on PENCOM, the DG of PENCOM, just mm -hmm. like they have addressed. Yes. Uh, we're also calling on the president himself and everyone involved, Oops. the inspector general of police. Let's, you know, put our hands together, mm -hmm. uh, look at the drawing board and ensure that we, we, we have a better, you know, because if you look at it, Justin, yeah. the police, the police, they're really going through a lot. The Nigerian mm -hmm. police mm -hmm. are really not paid. I, I know that, you know, we are always on the other side of, Oh yes, uh, the police it's not that uh, brutality mm. and what have you, uh, you know the behavior of the police and what have you. Yeah. But uh, to, to really look at it, I don't think that the Nigerian police force is properly catered for. Uh, if you look at it, just look at a typical police officer. It, is. it doesn't even command respect the, from the, their looks. At all, at all. You know? And you just and, speak to and, them. And, and, and it's not good. We can't it's say not. that these are the persons we have handed over uh, our lives, I mean, the protection of our lives, our safety. Into if their welfare is not guaranteed, like you said, they might just uh, look the other way. And again, it, this is not, okay, aside from this, I think we should take it one step further. Yesterday was the Armed Forces Remembrance Day, you know, so aside from the police, uh, security generally, those who have, uh, you know, paid the supreme price and um, their families are left behind, uh, who is uh, catering to their needs? You know, when you hear the stories of, uh, you know, those uh, legionnaires and uh, families of uh, fallen heroes, you get so sad to know that sometimes uh, they cannot even fend for themselves since uh, uh, their loved ones uh, who uh, you know, fought for the security of the country are not really being taken care of. It is really sad. So we're just uh, appealing to the authorities, uh, the Nigerian police, uh, the armed forces generally, you know, we should protect and care and uh, provide for the welfare of uh, people in service, those who have retired and those uh, who have gone, their families should be taken care of. Well, this is the point where we take a break and when we return, we'll be looking at the front pages of the National Dailies, we call it Off the Press. We ask that you stay with us. Good morning. <laughs>